Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss inference theory of predicate calculus. So first, we will define some rules on the basis of which we will discuss the inference. So first, we will start with universal specification. In short, you can write it U S. Let P X be a predicate on X, and let A be the universe of discourse for A. Then for all X P X, this tautologically implies. P Y, where Y is an arbitrary element of A. Now look at this. A is the universe of discourse for A. So, tautologically implies means whenever this part is true, whenever for all x P X is true, P Y is also true. So, what is Y? Y is an arbitrary element. Arbitrary element means any element. It may be any element of the set A. So, this Y is a symbol for which represents all the elements of the set A. That's why we are saying arbitrary. It can change its value. So it represents all the values of A. That's why it is arbitrary element. So it is very important to note that it is an arbitrary element. So how can it possible to understand this one? It's very easy. Whenever we are saying P is true for all x, it means P is true for all values of A, and Y is one of the values of the A. That's why. You can write it for all x p x. This tautologically implies p y, where y is an arbitrary element of a. So just I will give you one example. Say x uh, belongs to the set suppose a, where a equal to say two four six eight, and suppose p x x is an even number. X is an even number. So now for all x p x. It means every x from this set, every element of A is an even number. Every element of A is an even number. So this is true. So whenever it is true, so you can write this tautologically imply P Y. Y is any element, arbitrary element means Y represents any element of this set A. So you can write it for all x tautologically imply P Y, where Y is an arbitrary element of A. So this is. Arbitrary element. Now, existential specification. Let P X be a predicate on X, and let A be the universe of discourse for X. Then there exists X P X. This tautologically implies P Y, where Y is not an arbitrary element of A. This is very important. Is not an arbitrary element of A. This is particular value from A. It may be one or more than one value. To understand this one, just I will give you one example. Let x belongs to A and where A equal to say one, two, three, four, five, and six. And suppose P x this equal to x is an even number. X is an even number. So this is the predicate P x uh, denoted by denoted by x is an even number. So if I write there exist x p x, there exist x p x means some values of a are even number. So some values of a are even number means so this one is true. Whenever this is true means some values of uh, a are uh, even number means we are talking about only some values that is two, four, and six only. So if I write this p y. This tautologically implies P Y. So here Y stands for only these values two, four, and six, not for all these values. That's why we are saying Y is not an arbitrary element. So remember this fact. Whenever we apply this rule, existential specification, here this Y is not an arbitrary. It means it is for only few values of the universe of discourse. So now. Just I will give you another example so that some further concepts uh, will be considered. Now look at this. Suppose I define Q x. This x is greater than or equal to five. X is greater than or equal to five. And if I write these predicates with quantifier like there exist x p x and there exist x qx now look at this as i told you here i can use the variable y so for this suppose the variable is p y now can i choose the same variable y for this one 
can i write qy or not look at this there exists x p x means for some values of x p is true and these values are 2 4 and 6 and for these values you have written y as a representative variable now q x is look at this there exists x means for some values of x q is true q x is x is greater than or equal to 5 for some values of x these values are greater than or equal to 5 means this part is true for only these two values so look at this in previous case y stands for 2 4 and 6 but here this is true for 5 and 6 it means if i am using y here i cannot use y here here y stands for 2 4 and 6 but here the variable which i will use this will stand for 5 and 6 so every time whenever you find these type of separate prepositions this is basically a preposition or you can say predicate with quantifiers then you will use different variables for each of these predicates with quantifiers so you will write q another value will say this is h so if you write here y then it will be not correct so try to avoid such type of mistakes because if you write y then definitely your conclusion will be different so be careful while you apply such type of reasonings and particularly in these cases try to take different variable and justify yourself just go to the universe of discourse and check and analyze then decide whether you can write a same variable or not so here in this case you will use two different variables one for this one another for this one now universal generalization let us px be a predicate again is a universe of discourse now look at this if y is an arbitrary element is very important if y is an arbitrary it means y stands for all the values of you know, this set a it means you can assign any value of a to y then it is arbitrary so if y is arbitrary then you can write py tautologically implies for all x px because y is arbitrary and p is true for y and you know that y is arbitrary means you can assign any value of the set to this y it automatically shows that this p is true for all values of this set a therefore you can write py is tautologically implies for all x px if y is not an arbitrary element and you know this fact then you cannot apply this rule so in principle whenever you have applied the previous rule universal specification p x for all x p x this tautologically implies p y it simply means p y is an arbitrary element and later on where you can from there you can write it for all x p x from there because here we know that y is an arbitrary element but look at this if i have written there exists x p x this tautologically implies p y here y is not an arbitrary element so i cannot write this one at for all x p x so this rule is not applicable here because here y is not an arbitrary element so it is very important to remember that whether y is an arbitrary element or not an arbitrary element Existential generalization. So Px is the predicate on X, A is the universe of discourse. So you know this is P. P is true for Y and Y is an element of A. So it, it is very simple. P is true for Y means P is true for some of the element of the set A. If it is true for some of the elements of A, then you can write it there exists X, Px because at least one value from this set A exists for which P is true. So it is true for some value, then you can write there exists x p y. Here no need to check whether it is an arbitrary or not. Simply talking about because y is particular element. Y is an element of a, and you know that y is you know, p is true for this element. So we are not saying that it is true for one element, two element, three or an arbitrary. Simply we know that p is true for y. This is a particular element, and you know p is true for y. Then you can write there exists x px now look at this example here we have to show that for all x px and qx tautologically implies there exists x px 
so we'll start from this left hand side so for all x p x and q x and q x now look at this for all x for each x p x and q x p uh, is true as well as q is also true so you can write it p y and q y q y here you can write using using universal specification in short i have written us using universal specification and further you can make a note that here where where y is an arbitrary element arbitrary element arbitrary element means as i told you earlier this stands for all the values of the universe of discourse so this py and qy now we have to show that this tautological implies there exists x px look at this now this is a preposition here py and qy means it may be true it may be false so for this particular value py this is a preposition and qy is also a preposition now you know p and q whenever we write p and q this tautologically implies p or uh, this tautologically implies q also so we can write this tautologically implies py here you can write since p and q tautologically implies so this is p y now you know that y is true for no, p is true for some value of the universe of discourse and this value is y so you can write there exists x there exists some value in universe of discourse for which p is true and this value is y so from p y you can write it there exists x p x so you can write it using existential existential generalization using we have generalized it so you know that p is true for y now you have generalized it you can write it there exist x p x so in this way you can show these implications now look at this example two here we have to show this tautologic implies there exist x q x so we will start from left hand side now look at this first quantifier is for all x p x implies q x and there exist x p x so this quantifier for this one and this quantifier is for this only p x now look at this can we use the same variable for simplifying these two or not look at this this part is true for all x it means whatever value here we choose here we can choose uh, a uh, particular value for which p x is true only look at there exists x means some p is true for a particular value of x and this may be y but here this is true for all value it means whatever value we choose here this statement is uh, will also be true for the value which we have taken here so in this way we, we can choose a single variable for this part and this part also because Again, I am saying if you suppose choose a particular value y here, uh, assuming that p is true for y, then look at this, you can choose y here also because this statement true for all the values of the universe of discourse and y is one of the value of the universe of discourse. So, we will write it, this tautologically implies p y implies q y p y implies q y and p y so using using universal specification and look at this existential specification every time it is not the case that you can use the same variable you have to check the problem very carefully whether we can use the same variable or not though sometimes it appears that we can use the same variable but it is not true for all these cases so you have to check very carefully now look at this here this is p implies q 
qy and py you know if you go back this is the rule modus ponens so p and p implies q so this is equivalent to qy so you can write it using using modus ponens using modus ponens so this is qy now look at this uh, you have reached to conclusion qy we have to show there exist x qx from this you know that q is true for a particular value of y so you can generalize it you can write it there exist x q x using using existential generalization using existential generalization so in this way you can show such type of implications now look at this example here we have to check whether the following implication is true for all x px or qx this tautologically implies for all x px or for all x qx now look at this for all x px or qx means for every value of x x is either px or qx so for each x there is a freedom x may be px or x may be qx so whenever this is true is this part is also true this part says for all x px means all x are px or all x are qx so in this part there is a freedom that an individual x may be px or qx so you can't say if this is true you can't say that all x are px or all x are qx so this is not a valid implication but we have to show that this is not a valid how can we prove that this is not a valid for this we have to consider an example with the help of this example we will show that this is not a valid implication suppose look at this suppose x belongs to a set 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and say px x is an even x is an even number and qx say x is an odd number now look at this for all x px or qx we will check the truth values of this one and this one Now for all x px or qx for each x either x is even or x is odd so is it true for this one for each value of x x is either even or x is odd so look at this this is true because each value of this set is either even or odd now look at this for all x px it means all the values for all value of x x is an even number so all values of x x is an even number so this is false it means this part is false or this part for all x qx for all x qx means all numbers in this set are odd numbers so this is also false and false or false this equal to false it means whenever this is true this statement right hand side statement is not necessarily true this may be false as we have we can check with this example so this implication is not a valid implication that's why it is not true so in this way whenever we have to show that a particular implication is not true then we have to give an example and with the help of this example we have to show that the given implication is not true or not valid